This installment of Japanese history continues from the previous installment with a look at the Meiji Restoration and beyond. In the last issue, we discussed the debate on the conquest of Korea and how Takamori Saigo was defeated by Okubo and Iwakura and returned to his hometown, Satsuma. In this issue, we will explain the samurai revolt that began when Saigo retired from the government. The Meiji Restoration was accomplished by samurai from all over Japan who were concerned about the future of Japan. The revolution succeeded and the Meiji government was born. However, the Meiji government they created did not govern for the samurai. The goal of the Meiji government was to increase national power to catch up with Western nations. They knew that in order to catch up with the West, the privileged class of samurai would be an obstacle. In order to create a strong army, it was necessary for all citizens to become soldiers like the French army led by Napoleon. Therefore, the political government abolished the status system that had existed during the Edo period, and gradually implemented measures to make all samurai, farmers, and merchants commoners. However, even Saigo and Okubo could not change the status of their masters, the lords, to that of commoners. The lords were distinguished from the commoners by their status as nobles. The nobles of the lords' nobility were very few in number and were not a great burden to the government. With the Meiji Restoration, the samurai lost their privileges. Let us now look at the process of deprivation of samurai privileges by the Meiji government. In 1871, the Meiji government made the feudal lords the nobility and their samurai retainers the person with samurai ancestors. The lord-servant relationship between the samurai and the lord was abolished, and the salary for the samurai was paid by the Meiji government. The stipend for the samurai was enormous, accounting for 37% of the revenue. In 1873, all citizens were required to be drafted into the military. This eliminated the raison d'etre of the samurai, whose profession was to fight. Many in the government objected to this conscription system. Takamori Saigo was one of them, but after Eritomo Yamagata's hard persuasion, Saigo finally agreed. The adoption of this conscription system increased the dissatisfaction of many samurai. In 1876, the government notified the samurai that they would no longer be paid a stipend and gave them a small amount of public bonds. Some samurai started their own businesses using the bonds, but few were able to turn them into successful operations. In the same year, 1876, the government enacted the Sword Abolition Ordinance, which prohibited the wearing of the belt, the soul of the samurai. These two policies resulted in the complete loss of samurai privileges. In 1876, a series of samurai rebellions broke out. These rebellions took place almost exclusively in Western Japan. Western Japan is the region where Satsuma and Chashu existed and where the samurai who fought in the Meiji Restoration were based. Conversely, the samurai of Eastern Japan were followers of the Edo Shogunate, and although they may have had their own grievances, they did not oppose the government. Let me explain the main topic, the Saga Rebellion, in the preface. The ringleader of the rebellion was Shinpei Edo. He was a native of the Hizen clan. When the Boshin War broke out, the Hizen clan, along with Chashu and Satsuma, fought against the shogunate forces, and he played a central role in the Hizen clan. It was as a politician after the restoration that he distinguished himself. He was a keen lawmaker and became the first Lord Justice in 1872. He adopted the systems of Western countries, including the establishment of courts, prosecution, and defense council systems. His judicial reforms remain the foundation of the judicial system to this day. Edo was an ally of Saigo's in his conquest of Korea, and he resigned from the council with Saigo during the political upheaval of 1873. When Saigo, Edo, and Itagaki resigned their posts and returned to their hometowns, samurai in their hometowns who were dissatisfied with the Meiji government feared that Saigo and Edo would lead a rebellion. Therefore, the government persuaded Saigo and others to remain in Tokyo. Following their recommendation, Higaki decided to stay in Tokyo. However, Saigo returned to his hometown of Kagoshima. 
In a sense, the conquest of Korea was also a ray of hope for the jobless samurai. By going to war with Korea, they were trying to regain their raison d'etre. The war ended in victory for Iwakura and Okubo, and Saigo and Edo were forced to return to their hometowns. The anger of the dissatisfied samurai was directed at Iwakura and Okubo, who had destroyed the theory of the conquest of Korea. Edo remained in Tokyo for some time after resigning from the council. At the entreaties of Saga Samurai who adored him, he decided to return to his hometown and left Tokyo in January 1874. However, the intensity of the local rebel movement made him hesitant, and he decided to take a rest in Nagasaki. Toshimiki Okubo had investigated that among the samurai, the samurai of Saga were the most likely to revolt. He had the troops in the vicinity of Saga secretly preparing for battle. A small incident on February 1, 1874 prompted Okubo to order his troops to suppress Saga. This attack by government troops on Saga infuriated the samurai of Saga. Edo, who had entered Saga shortly before this, was welcomed as the leader of the Saga samurai. Edo decided to fight the government forces to protect Saga. He knew the odds were in his favor. He believed that if he and his men stood up, samurai from all over the country would rise up to fight as well. And Saigo was sure to join the war. On February 9, 1874, Okubo was delegated all authority by the government to suppress Saga and took control of the government forces. In addition to the troops from Kumamoto that he had sent to subdue Saga, he also brought with him troops from Osaka. Okubo sent a letter to his subordinate Hirobumi Ito. In the letter, Okubo said, if we make a mistake in our initial response to this rebellion, it may spread throughout the country. Therefore, we must crush the insurgents as soon as possible. However, our army is made up of peasants and merchants who have no experience in war. I am very anxious to be able to fight with the samurai of Saga who fought in the Boshin War. We must bring a sufficient number of soldiers and weapons. On February 15, government forces defending Saga Castle and rebel forces engaged in battle, and the government forces were defeated. Among the government forces at this time was Yasutaka Oku, who had led the Second Army in the Russo-Japanese War. He was seriously wounded in this battle. Okubo and his government forces arrived in Fukuoka on February 19 and marched toward Saga. Then, on February 22, the rebel and government forces clashed at Mount Asahiyama. The rebels were soon outgunned and defeated. The exact number of rebels is not known, but it is thought to have been as many as 5,000. Against them, the government forces confronted the rebels with overwhelming force. On the 23rd, the government forces marched toward Saga, and the rebels continued to lose ground. Edo headed for Kagoshima to seek Takamori Saigo's rescue. On March 1st, Okubo arrived in Saga and successfully crushed the rebels. On the same day, Edo was rejected by Saigo to raise his army and went to Tosa. He was then captured in Shikoku. He intended to plead his case in the court system he had constructed for himself. But Okubo would have none of it. He held the judicial and police power regarding this revolt. The judge who took Okubo's intentions into consideration was a former subordinate of Edo's. He did not give them a proper trial, but sentenced Edo and the other leaders of the rebellion to death, and they were immediately beheaded. His head was to be exposed in public. Takemei Enomoto, a retainer of the shogunate who had fought to the end on the side of the shogunate in the Boshin War, had been forgiven for his crimes and was working for the new government. Edo was a distinguished member of the Meiji Restoration and some in the government wanted to see him given a more gentle sentence, but Okubo took decisive action. Many considered this action to be Okubo's personal punishment of Edo. Edo was a man of eloquence and extremely perceptive. Although his intelligence was useful to the Meiji government, it seems that he often clashed with those around him because he did not stand up for his own views. For Okubo, Edo must have been a difficult colleague to use. Okubo gave Edo the ultimate punishment, without allowing him to make any excuses, in order to stop the samurai who were trying to start a rebellion. 
Perhaps due in part to Okubo's initial response, there were no samurai uprisings for some time after the Saga Rebellion. However, Okubo was preparing to further deprive the samurai of their privileges. In 1876, the government issued a decree abolishing the sword and a law prohibiting samurai from receiving a stipend, which caused an outcry of dissatisfaction among the samurai. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel and press the like button.